Right, um, we are on uh, agenda, agenda item 15, um, the CCHL draft letter of expectations. Um, yeah, Linda, do you have much to talk to for this? Uh, no, I was going to ask you to, if I could take it as read, uh, given that we've had two workshops and quite a lot of conversation. Um, I believe that the redraft reflects the comments that have been made in the workshops to date, but happy to take questions. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, Victoria? Councillor Henstrom. Thank you. Uh, hi, Linda. Hi. I, I'm just noting the uh, letter that's been sent by Christchurch Airport to the Chair of Christchurch City Holdings in respect of tariffs. And that's obviously been written after this letter of expectation has been written. So my query is, if you'd known that at the time that you wrote the letter, would you have included the wording that you've got in there? And is it strictly necessary now, given that they've already taken their stance on it? Um, I think that there's some message in, in there that's still quite useful, because the letter that um, has been sent to the CCHL board and forwarded on to us uh, is not, it, it allows us to think that we might want to just make sure that we are kept abreast of how that unravels from here or rolls out from here. Um, I don't think we would want to lose sight of that. And so I think the, the messaging, maybe not the exact wording, there might be a little bit of wording that could be altered, but in large part, the messaging still remains the same, I think. Any other questions on anyone? A little bit of additional wording, if I'd like to pop in, if I may. Um, the first bit's on the bottom of page 235, and it's just at the end of where it's, um, the second to last paragraph says the council expects CCHL to continue to actively manage the council's investments in the group's subsidiaries. Um, and then if we can just put um, full stop, we expect CCHL to have regular and ongoing dialogue with all subsidiaries to ensure they assist in meeting council overall objectives. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it's possibly something that they already do, but I just think that we need to have clarity and be really extra clear about what we're asking for. It's a bit like including the tariffs words as well. And then just one more, which was at the um, on page... Um, 239 under briefings to add one more bullet point um, um, that um, in their briefings um, they also include financial performance update just to be clear okay no, that's good. are you okay with that yeah okay can I just ask the question that um, when the, um, Councillor Cotter's just put with it we expect CCHL to have regular and ongoing dialogue isn't that in there isn't that in our letter already of expectations? Uh, it probably isn't uh, as explicit as that, but it's certainly um, imp implied and it's certainly an expectation and there isn't any issue with putting it in, even if it is a repeat. We've got active management in there. That's right, actively manage the council's investments and group subsidiaries. It's just extra clarification. And this came to us actually through the Northington's report that we need to request that CCHL have stronger oversight over the subsidiaries. And I think this is just one way of ensuring that we get that and that we get that connection. And we've asked for regular um, briefings with CCHL to try and strengthen our relationship with them as well. I just think that these things are better in than not. Person, are you OK? Do you, yeah, no are we going to move it for this? I'll move. A second that. A second. Um, Pauline. So if there's no, are there any further questions? Yes. Councillor yeah. Johansson. Yeah, it's, it's a question, but um, like, I like it. I think the, the, the letter's good. I, I was just concerned that we're saying we expect them, see, this is on page 238, we expect CCHL to continue its commitment to exercise restraint in the level of senior executive and director's remuneration and ensure that it's appropriately linked to performance. And I just wonder whether we need to put that into the um, sort of uh, not so much continue, but to actually do, because it feels very much like we've been saying that for quite some time. But what we're seeing is, you know, um, and we still haven't got the, the link between the lowest paid and the highest paid, but 
it, it does seem like we still want to see improvement in that area rather than just um, the status quo, which doesn't seem to be making much of a difference. Certainly there's no problem with taking out the word continue. Um, one issue I'd just like to point out is that at least three, maybe four of the sub CCHL subsidiaries have in their annual report um, that linkage between the lowest and the highest pay. Right. And do we know what the trends are? Like, is the gaps increasing or decreasing? Oh, no, I couldn't. I can't answer that, but I can tell you right. that we've put a workshop in for you okay. to uh, be able to yeah. uh, hear from CCHL on that particular issue. Yeah. And do you think do do you think we need to make reference to um, the level of payout when people depart? Because when they've provided the public facing information, what you can see are these massive spikes. And when we say linked, uh, appropriately linked to performance, maybe that covers it. But it, it, it is quite concerning when you look at the graphs. It looks like, you know, the things aren't going up massively until you have some spikes where people depart. Um. I'm sort of torn in that and, and wanting to, to I, I'll actually have to take that back to CCHL um, okay. and just question that issue. I have a feeling that exit packages aren't part of their remuneration policies anymore. In fact, right. oh, Sarah's just confirmed that. Um, so you shouldn't see that coming through in the future reporting <coughs> anyway. Right. Can I just add clarification? There sure. are existing yeah. contracts, yeah, potentially. Yeah. It's the new ones. Yeah, That was something that Council asked for some time ago. Oh, great. That's that's good. Russell yeah. just wanted to comment on yeah, that. Yeah, just we're probably bearing into like, that's an area of um, personal engagement between employees and the board, so it's probably not sure. an area you want to give you know, direct direction to. I mean, right. that, that's a, yeah, a privacy matter. Okay, um, but I think kind of we've heard a little bit that there is some kind of steps to address it at a policy level, which which is good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Donovan. <coughs> Thanks, Linda. Oh, sorry. It looks, it looks good. Um, just wanted to, as just a follow up to a question that was asked last time in terms of the responsible investment framework. Um, I see that there's an opportunity there to have a workshop with um, around the net, uh, 2030 net um, carbon neutral target. Mm -hmm. Is it something that needs to be made more explicit if that request has come through? I understand that it's coming through the Audit and Risk Committee, um, which is great. Um, however, we were, I was also hoping that other councillors separate to that process could just have an opportunity to workshop that. Is that well, something we could put in here explicitly? Well, it is in here, the uh, last bullet point in, under briefings. Which page is that? So it's just before the ta the timetable. Yeah, in there. Okay, uh, in the mirror. It's not up there. That's great. <laughs> yeah. It's, so there'll be a briefing workshop, briefing, same um, thing. Yeah. Something like that. Great. Yes. Thank you. Oh, are you debating? Yeah. Not a question. Yeah, no. Okay, no questions. Right. Are there any further questions? Yeah, um, well, I, well, I welcome the decision that's been made around the Centro Otago Airport. I guess I was surprised that we didn't get a briefing or we didn't get a, I mean, kind of just got, got released. Um, is, are we going to get a briefing on what, what that means in terms of going forward? Well, we've asked for one in the briefing section that was yeah. just up before. There's a request that they... Um, they brief us on the CCHL briefs on the approach to holding CIAL right. accountable, and that'll wrap up, basically bring to the fore all the issues that you're talking okay. about. Um, also, we've got the draft SOIs coming up, and that will there'll be a workshop or briefing of some description for that. I'm not right. sure under the current change of rules. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you.
Thank you, Chair. Um, <coughs> well, I'd just like to, um, this, this is very important, this is good, but I'd, I'd like to thank CCHL for listening to what the Council said in December and going out and asking their subsidiaries for savings for either increased dividends or debt repayment, and tariffs is an example of this. So I just wanted to put that out there publicly. Thank you. Councillor Hentop. Oh, thanks. <coughs> I just I just want noted that I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about our direction of travel with us. When you think about why we have uh, CCHL and our subs, and CCHL is there to be a, a buffer, but we're running pretty dangerously close to the line on interfering with their operational capacity. And I think, as a word of caution, it's just not good practice for us to be redrafting these things at the last minute in these meetings. I, I mean, I accept that it probably doesn't make a hell of a lot of difference, but it's, it's not a practice that we should be uh, engaging with and when we've had it in our papers for, for some time. Um, the other point that I really wanted to make today was that, let's remember, we, we appoint capable people to our boards and to our subs, and they appoint capable, professional, um, knowledgeable, skilled staff and employees to do the job. We expect them to do a good job, and by and large, they are doing a really good job. And yet, you know, we're running close to the line and, and could be seen to be clipping their wings and, and effectively hobbling their ability to make really good commercial decisions and creating long-term sustainable growth and revenue from our assets, and revenue which ultimately is for the benefit of our ratepayers. So it's it's just the word of caution. This is pretty prescriptive, and I'm a little bit uncomfortable with it. Thank you, Councillor Cotter. Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks for the work on this, Linda. I think it's pretty good and pretty clear. Um, don't forget that you know we are the shareholders, and we sit here on behalf of the ratepayers to ensure that CCHL is being transparent with us and that we're comfortable that they are aligning with our strategic priorities and what we as a council find um, is important for the City of Christchurch. So there's a fine line between wing clipping, I know what you're saying, Councillor Henstock, but I don't believe this is wing clipping at all. I think this is just asking for clear accountability. And I think um, especially the reporting back and building, we need to build a really close honest relationship with CCHL and that's the best way forward. So I, I, I don't have a problem with this, so I'll be supporting this today. Thank you. Councillor, are you handsome? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, look, I think it's really good that we have, um, in recent time, started to get a lot more um, transparency about about what's happening with CCHL and uh, we, we're we doing a letter of expectation. You know, it, was, it was only up until very recently that we started doing this. So. Uh, I think it's good. There's a really good um, review into the Auckland Council companies, uh, and it's quite interesting to read that around the relationship between the the shareholder, the council, and the companies. And I think you know there is a role for us to play as the shareholder. We should be setting the strategic direction and uh, 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 having a discussion about what we think is important. Um, and there are many things that we can do shared that we can get better outcomes for the city if we work together rather than work in isolation. Uh, I do want to commend CCHL for um, making an effort to have a lot of the company AGMs in open now, which I think is good, or having uh, open briefings around the annual reporting. Uh, another example is greater transparency around chief executive remuneration. So, you know, it was all always we were told, wait for the annual report, so you had to wait quite a long time. Now they're taking a lot more steps to disclose the remuneration uh, when people are appointed or as part of requests that we may have. And I'm really excited, or interested, I should say, in getting finally getting, after many years of trying to get the information, the, the, the um, work around the, the, the lowest paid and the highest paid. Because I think fundamentally, as a society, we do have some structural issues. And the most important thing is to get the data to see what's happening with the introduction of the living wage and the request for ex ex senior executive restraint what's happening with the salaries across our organisation. So I look forward to our companies being really good employers and, and, and treating people fairly and paying them fairly. Um, and I think getting some of this information is really useful for us as a city to know what direction we're heading in. So I um, appreciate the work that our companies do. Um, and uh, I, I'm really also, uh, as the Mayor has said, uh, very much welcoming of the decision that they have made around the terrorist airport uh, we did express last year concern around the cost implications uh, and also the environmental implications as well. So it's good to see that there's an acknowledgement now that that's something that may not um, be affordable for us in the short to medium term, 
uh, and that there's a lot of other things that need to happen before progress is made. So uh, in particular, I do also want to acknowledge that for that local community, although the project has been slowed down, there is an ongoing need for engagement and our letter acknowledges that we would like to see that continue and I think that's entirely appropriate. Councillor Harrison Hunt. <clears throat> Mine's not too long. I just wanted to just acknowledge the letter and thank Linda for your work on this and being very patient with us. And also uh, acknowledging that uh, as shareholders, it's really important that we have oversight, direct oversight over um, those, oh, for example, our city's assets. And uh, we will and should allow CCHO to do what they need to do, while also acknowledging that we need to have vision and be able to see exactly what it is that they are doing to make sure that it aligns with our values and our strategies. I'm also really excited for the briefings that are upcoming, particularly around the responsible investment principles, something that's that I'm passionate about, and the way that we're doing business responsibly and ethically. Kia ora. Councillor Fields. Um, yeah, I just want to make one really, really small point. Like, so f first of all, thanks for all the, the work that's gone into this. It's, it looks really good. Um, at no point is this council ever saying to CCHL, do not come to us with good ideas. By all means, if you have a good idea that aligns with our strategic objectives, that is good for the city of Christchurch, please come and talk to us about that. We have always been open to that and nothing has changed. And therefore, I would always encourage CCHL to come to us with good ideas. And I'm happy to support this letter. Councillor Barber. Yeah, thank, thank you, Linda. Um, <clears throat> yeah, in answer to um, my learned colleague across the way there, I feel like CCHL did come to us with a range of good ideas, um, and I guess we decided uh, to go a different way, and uh, and, and I understand that. Um, my concern is, is for the future in terms of how we can grow, uh, how we can, we can do some positive high growth things to increase the revenue uh, that CCHL makes for us to reduce the rates burden on our um, rate payers. And I think that um, <clears throat> perhaps we missed an opportunity recently to, uh, to, to look at that, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to look at it again in the future. Thank you. Councillor Peters. Thank you. Thank you for your work on this, Linda. Truly appreciate it, as always. Um, and I just want to pick up on the sort of to and fro there with my colleagues that really, for CCHL, please don't be afraid to ever come back to our council to um, present ideas. Uh, don't, don't, don't let our decision in December tie your hands behind your back and make you think you can't. We're always open around the table to consider ideas that are good for Christchurch. So um, please, please do, do come to us as you... Um, have ideas, and, and we're keen to make the best of this for our ratepayers and the best for Christchurch. Right, I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those against? That's Aaron or Councillor Kewan. Uh, any abstentions? And that has passed. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you. No, and I'm finished. We've moved it, haven't we? No, no, we're not moved into the X. It's actually quite Oh, right, okay, yeah. All right, you're moving, and I'll second that. All those in favour? Aye. Anyone against? Oh, great. PX. <laughs>